Uh, well, thanks uh, a lot for joining uh, our uh, online meetup. Today we will be talking about uh, online UI UX Hackfest. And you can already see a first type on my slide because it's not an early got kickoff. It's just a common kickoff session. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, today um, we will do a quick introduction to the Hackfest. We will discuss how to contribute, how to record the contributions, and then I will uh, have quick introductions uh, to our project ideas and tracks uh, by their leaders. And after that, we will have plenty of time for Q&A. Uh, if you're interested to find these slides, uh, everything is open, everything is public, and I'm going to just uh, post it in our Gitter channel. So you can find uh, the slides here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is our Gitter chat. Uh, it's open 24/7, and if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to them. And later we will talk about uh, more communication channels. Okay, uh, we have uh, several presenters on the call, and uh, I guess every presenter will introduce themselves uh, during the presentation. So I will just uh, do a quick introduction to the meetup. Um, so uh, we use a Jenkins Online Meetup platform, um, and we will be using it for many uh, training sessions uh, during this online uh, Hackfest. So main idea is to have presentations by contributors for contributors. So we won't be targeting slides. Maybe many sessions won't have uh, slides at all. Uh, instead of that, we focus on live demos, on show and tell, on just sharing experiences, uh, and everybody is welcome to contribute. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. You can raise hand, uh, we can uh, grant you voice permissions if needed, and uh, you can uh, use Kone chat for um, any questions. So if you want to ask questions during the presentation, uh, in Zoom there is Kone feature, and please use that. Uh, also, we will be organizing additional uh, office hours during the Hackfest. Uh, again, we will talk about them later. And for offline communication, we have uh, Gitter chat and mailing clicks. So, now that's our communication channels, and let's proceed uh, with the main part of the presentation. So, as you probably know, we will have a Jenkins UI UX Hackfest uh, this week. Uh, so, it, actually, we plan to have a kickoff session uh, today uh, at 1 p.m. UTC and start after that. But uh, we forgot to put uh, time zones in our invitations. So, officially, the Hackfest started yesterday, and we also had uh, a number of contributions. So. Well, it's uh, good news. Uh, so, uh, just uh, to explain some context of this Hackfest, uh, if you're an active Jenkins user, you may have different experiences with that, but uh, one of the top feedback we get uh, from Jenkins users is that uh, its uh, user experience could be improved, and specifically user interface, documentation, um, and uh, after some discussions, uh, we started uh, talking about your UX Hackfest. Uh, first time it was discussed uh, at the Contributor Summit in Brussels, and here we are. So we are doing uh, this event, and we specifically focus on improving user interfaces, user documentation, and also on um, uh, sharing uh, the word about Jenkins. So uh, any uh, success stories um, uh, and uh, knowledge transfers, so they're welcome during this event. And we invite all contributors uh, to participate. Uh, at the end of the event, we will be distributing some schwag and prizes, um, and we will talk how to get them later. So, yeah, this is a quick introduction. Uh, one common question is what Hackfest means, because uh, when we reference that, uh, people start imagining uh, hackathon. So just uh, all developers uh, get together for one day, two days, uh, basically hack and sleep. So that's not what we are doing. Actually, we are doing a quite opposite thing. Uh, we know that everybody has commitments, and we invite everyone to just spend as much time as you can or want. So if you can spend a few hours, it's fine. If you can spend a whole week, yeah, it's awesome, but uh, it's quite unlikely. Uh, so uh, whatever time you dedicate is fine. And we mostly focus on uh, learning, sharing experiences, and having some fun. So we will be organizing a number of training sessions. We can do ad hoc KTs uh, during the presentation, uh, sorry, during the event. And of course, uh, we welcome any kind of contributions. 
Uh, the main goal uh, which we would suggest is to focus on your own user experience issues. So if you use Jenkins, uh, uh, again, you may have hit some issues. Uh, during uh, the registration, uh, we asked uh, people to provide top three things that they would like to change in uh, Jenkins. And we got uh, quite a number of responses there. Thanks everyone. Uh, we will be processing these responses and publishing them later. But we definitely know that uh, there are some uh, UX issues we could address. Um, another uh, point about this hack is that it's uh, newcomer friendly. So you don't have to be an experienced Jenkins developer or you don't have to be an experienced uh, developer uh, at all. Uh, there are uh, topics which, um, uh, which can be handled uh, by everyone. And uh, if you want to just start contributing to Jenkins, it's a good opportunity to do that. So I would like to thank uh, the entire um, org team which uh, made this event possible. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of groundwork to make it happen. Thanks to Mark, uh, to Tracy, to team, uh, Mark and Alisa who helped with different uh, aspects of the preparation. And also thanks to all the uh, special interest group members uh, who helped uh, to review the initial stories, uh, project ideas, and who provided a lot of feedback during the event. Also, thanks to our sponsors, because yeah, we will be distributing Schwag. Uh, we also use uh, this online meetup platform uh, for presenting the event. Uh, and uh, thanks to Continuous Delivery Foundation and Cloudbiz uh, for making it possible. Okay, um, one of the, uh, so uh, right now there is no questions, right? No. Okay, so we can continue. Uh, I will uh, briefly uh, talk how about uh, participating to this event. And then yeah, again, we will talk about topics. So how to get started? Uh, if you registered uh, to the hard first, uh, you have already received an email which summarizes uh, the common steps. We also have it on the Jenkins website and I will uh, just uh, quickly show it to you. So first thing, if you haven't registered yet, uh, please feel free to register. You can do it at any moment during the uh, hard first. So for example, if you decide to uh, participate on Friday, it's still possible just to do that. And uh, this is actually a quite short uh, form. Uh, yeah, it could have been shorter, I guess, but still. Uh, well, you can see my responses there or not? Oh, no. Uh, okay, so basically we ask you to provide your email address. We will need it uh, for delivery of uh, uh, Schwab uh, because we need to contact you somehow. If you're not comfortable with it, you can just uh, uh, register in the uh, Gitter channel. So just say, I want to contribute and we will uh, track that. So then specify your GitHub ID, which we need uh, for information, uh, we need your display name, and also we ask, uh, how much time you would like to spend, uh, what area would you like to work on. Yeah, they, these three things you, you would like to improve. Uh, yeah, please share your feedback. And after that, also some uh, details. So once you register, uh, the next step is to actually join our Gitter channel. Again, jpci slash hardfest. Everything uh, will be discussed here, at least for the moment. Maybe later, some teams will be uh, using different channels. But uh, for any kind of Q&A, uh, please uh, join this channel. Uh, so then, uh, well, uh, you're already participating in the kickoff session, so no need to spend time on this step, uh, but yeah, uh, we will publish the recording and make it available. And after that, uh, you just need uh, to take a look at uh, the project ideas and to think about what you li would like to work on. Uh, we'll get to that later. And after that, uh, that's it. You can start contributing. So it's quite straightforward. And uh, let's talk about uh, how to contribute. On the Jenkins uh, project, we actually invest a lot of time in maintaining uh, contributor guidelines. We have a page for participate and contribute. And you can find uh, um, uh, guidelines for different flavors of contribution uh, on this page. And the many items are actually related to user experience. So for example, coding, documentation, but also design work, helping people, helping with localization. All of that uh, can be a part of uh, user experience stories. Um, so for example, if you want to, to work on a code, you can go here, you can find some guidelines, you can uh, find the allocations of our repositories, you can also find some guidelines for newcomers, including preferences to newcomer ratios. 
and useful links which describe how to contribute. And basically similar information is uh, available on all pages. So please refer to this website. Um, during this Hackfest, um, you can actually contribute uh, to any area which is related to user experience. We have three tracks, but uh, still uh, um, uh, you can do something else. Uh, regarding development, uh, yeah, if you know Java, if you know JavaScript, there is plenty of opportunities. If you want to write something in Go, we also have projects like, for example, Jenkins Kubernetes Operator or CLI in Go. You can work on that. And basically, you can find uh, other languages. For example, we have companies in C Sharp, in C++, and a lot of development tooling is in various scripting languages. Uh, if you want to contribute in the to documentation, the most of our documentation uh, is in documentation uh, as code at the moment. So this is a GitHub flavor of Markdown or ASCII doc. We also invite you to do user experience testing. It may be the testing of documentation, for example, installation guidelines, tutorials, new documentation pages, or new features we are working on. Uh, all the reviews are also appreciated, as well as creating new content like blog posts, videos, etc. And last but not least, you can just help others. Uh, for example, uh, answering questions, pointing them to right communication channels. Um, it also counts as uh, a contribution. So you do not really have to code during this event. Uh, you can do other types, and later we'll talk how to do that. Uh, we have uh, three tracks. Uh, one is focused on user interface, um, uh, improving uh, look and feel, improving uh, accessibility. We also have um, a major project for um, read-only uh, configuration browsing, um, uh, UI themes, uh, some advanced projects for pipeline visualization. Later we will talk about that in details. Also, there is user documentation, which is mostly related to Jenkins I.O. or to the plugin documentation. And we have uh, spread the word, which is a track focused on promoting Jenkins, sharing experiences, etc. What it worth mentioning, that for example, if you want to code something, uh, yeah, obviously user interface, there is a lot of things you could do. But user documentation may also involve some coding surprising yeah. because our website, yeah, it's uh, documentation as code, but it also has an engine. For example, uh, it includes a lot of JavaScript uh, uh, for rendering and other CSS files. Also, we have a plugin site, which is basically written in JavaScript, React, and other components. And again, uh, uh, code contributions today will be uh, welcome. Same for user interface. Uh, the new features we are working on may also include documentation uh, and, uh, yeah. So tracks uh, just rather focuses. It uh, doesn't uh, uh, specify what exactly you could do there. Every contribution is welcome. Uh, we are also well aware that uh, user experience uh, is not just user interface or not even just the user interface in documentation. There is a lot of other flavors of user experience. During this Hackfest, yes, you can work on them. Uh, you can report these contributions, they will uh, count towards the goal. Uh, but yeah, we just do not uh, put uh, them uh, on the official list uh, because we want them to be focused. But if you want to work on the developer tools, uh, if you want to work, for example, to create new artwork, to create uh, design concepts for Jenkins, etc., it uh, also contributes to the project goals and we would appreciate such kind of contributions. Okay, I said contributions maybe 100 times already. Uh, so let's talk about how to do that. Uh, so uh, if you do code contributions, it's quite straightforward. You just submit pull requests to proper locations, they will be reviewed. Uh, it's uh, less straightforward, for example, if you want to publish an article or a video, if you do it on your website, it's also possible. And uh, in order to support that, we created a, a GitHub repository. Uh, which we will be using uh, uh, to report uh, uh, issues. So, uh, for example, uh, yeah, this is our website, uh, and actually just uh, a lot of automation for the bots. Uh, and if you want to report your contribution, uh, you just go to issues, click a new issue there, and then you get the issue templates for various kinds of contributions. So for example, your UX enhancements, bug fixes, documentation, et cetera, et cetera. So 
uh, in the morning I presented an example where I just did it uh, myself. But for example, today uh, we could uh, try something else. We know that uh, Olivier, one of uh, uh, Jenkins infrastructure officer and one of active Jenkins contributor. Uh, he helped a lot with uh, um, uh, redirects for Jenkins infrastructure. So just a second, uh, let uh, me open that. Uh, Jenkins Infra, Jenkins Infra. So if you see, uh, there has been a lot of pull requests recently related uh, to redirects for plugin documentation. Uh, Olivier helped uh, to review all of them and uh, I think we should recognize it. Uh, so let's try to do that. So it's related to documentation. Uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, say thanks to. Yeah. For the direct reviews. So something like that. So. I'm just checking the login, so it's actually all work. And yeah, here, yeah, so all templates are more or less similar. Uh, we just ask everyone uh, to summarize your contribution and then uh, put some links and screenshots if applicable so that we can uh, build the reports later. So, for example, here, uh, uh, as we said, defects. So, I put some text, I submit a decision, and voila, we get this ticket. Um, so uh, then uh, what we can do, uh, now uh, somebody from work admins will process this contribution and we just uh, use all contributors for that. So here I'll put uh, Olivier uh, and it's for documentation and reviews. Fortunately, I don't have to worry about uh, what exactly I write because it has a lot of magic under the hood to re recognize uh, text. And yeah. Okay, so now we got pull request. We merge this pull request. Uh, and so there is a lot of. Okay, I'll merge that. And after that, we have Olivia on the list. Done. And uh, if you want to submit your contribution, basically you do the same so that uh, we can uh, trace uh, this ticket and uh, just uh, create reports later. Obviously for code contributions, we can collect your pull requests later, but we would appreciate if you follow the same approach to, so that we can collect the data. So, yeah. Oleg, one of the things, if you could take us to the, to submit a new issue, one of okay. the things that was there I thought was ingenious that you had pointed out earlier that someone who works for a corporation where they may not allow them to even contribute content, mm -hmm. that UX testing row there, mm -hmm. you can test, you can contribute by helping us test, even if you can't submit a single pull request. This, this issue report could be your way of saying, I'm testing this. So I, I thought that was absolutely ingenious, no matter the IP restrictions in your organization, you can still help this project. Yeah, right. And another part of this uh, topic, uh, which we again didn't mention, is that we don't have, uh, we don't require uh, contributor license agreements uh, from contributors. So yeah, we have this CLA, but this CLA uh, applies only to contributors who get special permissions, for example, uh, in the Jenkins infrastructure or documentation. US contributor uh, doesn't, don't have to do anything. If you're allowed to submit uh, code, you can submit code. If you're not allowed to submit code, then even uh, in the such case, you can still do something. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, uh, then I'll continue. So another uh, question is about communication channels. So yeah, we have uh, this Gitter chat. Uh, if you're not comfortable with uh, chats, we also have mailing keys. So there are three mailing keys for user experience, documentation, advocacy, and outreach. So each track, uh, one mailing list. And for general questions, uh, there is also developer mailing list. We will be also organizing office hours so that yeah, it's just a common meeting in a Google Hangout. 
in which you can join and uh, basically discuss any questions or just uh, uh, chat with people about anything related to Jenkins. Uh, we will have daily uh, sessions uh, at 8 a.m. UTC and we will, we will also have sessions at 2 p.m. UTC. So you are welcome to join any of these sessions if you are interested. Um, and uh, if needed, uh, teams can uh, create uh, their own sessions on demand. Uh, if you want to navigate uh, through these sessions, uh, we have a, an event calendar specifically created for this event. I will click on the calendar link. So yeah, this is a browsing mode for me. So we displace everything is in UTC right now because this is how my calendar is configured. Uh, but yeah, for you, it will likely display uh, your preferred time zones or if needed, you can just change them. Uh, so uh, you can see all uh, the incoming sessions here. We will be still uh, announcing more sessions to Thursday and Friday, and everyone is welcome to join and present something if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is uh, the source of truths uh, for the events, and we will try to keep it up to date. Uh, we experienced some issues with the Google Hangout links because it's really difficult to manage them uh, after the recent changes. Uh, but yeah, uh, the most of the meetings uh, actually happen in Zoom, except office hours, which really happen in uh, Google Hangout. Okay. Um, another flavor of meetings is online meetups. Uh, as we said, there will be a number of training sessions um, uh, for different topics, uh, mostly for developers and contributors, but uh, there will be some uh, user-focused sessions. And if you want to find all these sessions, you just uh, can go on to our Jenkins online meetup platform. And here you can find um, a list of upcoming events. You have to go here because this list currently doesn't fit the default layout of five meetings. Uh, but yeah, this is our sessions we already have published and you can see that uh, you can just RSVP and uh, then join this session. You can add uh, them to the calendar if needed. Um, after that, you just welcome to participate. Again, if you want uh, to host your own session, for example, you want to talk about user experience of a particular component, or uh, you want to share some uh, best practices, how to improve user interfaces or documentation, please let us know in the chat and we will help you to get this session hosted. So we have a number of uh, org admins uh, who can help with that. During the event, uh, please also be aware of code of conduct. Uh, we have one in Jenkins. Uh, this code of conduct is based on contributor covenant. Uh, the main idea of that is just be nice. Uh, so we want uh, to make this event uh, a great experience for everyone. So uh, yeah, there uh, will be participants of different level of experience, but uh, please uh, help them and uh, please be kind during the communications. And uh, if anything happens, please let organizers know, but hopefully it will uh, be fine. So we have never really used the code of conduct uh, during online events. And yeah, let's keep uh, doing it that way. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, introduction to the Hackfest. Before we proceed, uh, are there any questions in the chat or anywhere? I had answered one online, Oleg, about mm -hmm. the assignment process for JIRA issues that I think is covered. Other than that, no questions in the Q&A. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to ask any question, just uh, put it to Kone or drop it uh, to the Gitter chat, whatever is more convenient, and we will discuss it there. Okay, uh, let's proceed with project introductions uh, then. So the first item on the list is a user interface. And here we have Jeremy on the call. So Jeremy, would you like to present it? Sure, let's move to the next slide. So, well, first of all, I should introduce myself, of course. I'm Jeremy Hartley. I'm, I'm a product manager working at CloudBees. I work on open source Jenkins and also on some CloudBees internal stuff. So, first of all, 
I'd like to say a lot of new work is being done on the new Jenkins UI. So we started work on what we call the new Jenkins UI at the end of 2019. Goals very briefly is to learn from Blue Ocean. So we abandoned that project a while ago. Um, be, learn from this really by being as inclusive of existing plugins as possible. So not just creating a new interface that didn't support the rest of Jenkins, but to really, you know, work with it. And we're starting the process of the new Jenkins UI by overhauling the look and feel of the existing UI. Next slide, please. So the work we've done so far during the first part of 2020, which some of you may have seen already, is we started off working on a new header bar for breadcrumbs. We followed up by working on a new footer, we're working on new buttons, we're working on new typography, we're working on a new navigation sidebar, we're working on new iconography. Next slide, please. And really, I just want to make a call to action. If people beyond this Hackfest are really serious about helping out with the Jenkins UI, please come and join us at the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. We started this late last year. We meet every two weeks at uh, 3 p.m. UTC. About 10 people join each week. Not always the same people, but about 10 people. We're looking for more contributors that want to work on the project. Um, if you want to find out more, just head over to uh, Jenkins.io 6, and then you'll find the UX sig there. That was briefly just a kickoff and a small call to action. I mean, we're busy with the new UI, but we really need your help, um, whether that's today, this week, or during the rest of the year. You know, any contributions welcome. Thank you for the introduction. I suggest uh, we uh, take a look at the project ideas. So, if you participated in the morning session, we just went uh, through the list. And I suggest the something like that. Um, so we have uh, quite a number of projects uh, published uh, for uh, UI UX. Uh, so starting from the bottom, yeah, one of the items is what Jeremy described, just improving uh, look and feel. And there is a number of uh, uh, related uh, newcomer friendly issues you could uh, work on. Uh, we are using uh, Jira queries for almost everything. So yeah, for example, here you can see that uh, there is um, a number of issues, uh, for example, related to Jenkins core, to warnings and Jeep plugin, etc. Uh, if you want to, to find more issues, for example, this one are just newcomer friendly. Uh, and uh, let's remove this uh, label and we will see all the issues and you'll get something like 300. Obviously, some of them uh, may be invalid, some may, uh, may need some uh, processing, but for this, we are quite confident that uh, they're relevant and you could work on them. Uh, if you want uh, to start working on something, for example, yeah, there is an issue to folder authorization plugin, then one button doesn't work. And uh, I guess WD is already working on that because I've seen that uh, there might be just a new UI for the plugin. But let's uh, uh, take, let's find something which is not assigned at the moment. Okay. I guess it's just default assigning. Yeah? Okay, so Jenkins code has no default assigned. So for example, if I want uh, to work on this issue, uh, yeah, you would need uh, to have access to Jenkins Jira and after that you can just uh, assign the issue to yourself. For example, well, I'm not really going to work on that at least today, but yeah, I can assign it, I can start progress and I can start working on that. And uh, then submit a pull request and uh, everybody who visits this issue will be able to see that it's actually acquired. So this is how you can modify that. Uh, for the components, yeah, you, sometimes we use Jenkins Jira, sometimes we use GitHub, uh, GitHub issues. For GitHub issues, our recommendation is to just put a command because you have to have write permissions in order to assign an issue. So yeah, in our case, we just recommend putting a command and uh, then uh, it will be handled. Okay, so this look and feel updates. Another flavor of that is actually accessibility. Uh, there is a number of uh, projects and the idea is to actually make Jenkins usable for everyone and it 
doesn't only include uh, uh, groups uh, of uh, users with disabilities or slow network connections, but also, for example, mobile devices. If you have a, tried using Jenkins on mobile device, you probably know what I'm talking about. And uh, there is a number of uh, projects which could help. One of the major projects uh, which we have ongoing is uh, changing uh, Jenkins configuration UI from tables uh, to divs. So this is um, an ongoing project and there is a staged pull request uh, uh, for that. And uh, we would appreciate uh, contributions, uh, user experience testing and also adapting plugins. Uh, Tim, would you like uh, to briefly speak about this project? Uh, sure. Um, so, for, so since the beginning, the Jenkins layout has been done using tables. Um, which back when it was originally built was how layout was done. Um, for a long time since then, that has not been the standard. Um, and it's made some, it's made modernizing the UI quite difficult. So um, Josh Soeff, um about a year ago, uh, no more than a year ago now, um, started working on trying to modernize that. I think there's been one or two previous attempts as well. Um, but this is the one that's gotten the closest. Um, so what we have now, uh, it should be on the first. Oh, yeah, yeah it's sort of uh, the oldest top on the uh, pull request. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a fully functional um, conversion from tables to divs. Um, and it's, it's possible to do that because most of the controls are all inside of Jenkins core. So plugins use either Jelly or Groovy usually and don't, mu don't write much HTML directly. Um, so because of that, we've been able to change all the central controls and uh, we've made a, a few um, UI improvements as part of this as well. So you see that, el that um, element that only just had opened, they just closed. Uh, so you see there's, there's now a visual indication um, when something is associated to a parent um, so you see the source code management is a child of modern SEM and then Git is a child of source code management. So it helps you associate the elements to the UI. It's kind of works in the current implementation because they're all moved over to the side. Um, but some of them, it doesn't work so well on others. Um, some other improvements is that mobile um, works really well um, on this without any effort for it. So, so this wasn't done at all for mobile, but it just it just works out of the box for a lot of um, the functionality. So that's, that's what the configure page looks like. Just, and just in general, most of the elements have been moved to the top and the fields on the bottom. So what we're mostly looking for is uh, any testing. Well, so the biggest issue we have right now is we just want to get um, as a good amount of testing done on it so that we're confident in shipping it. Uh, any fixes or improvements in other plugins to be useful. We have made some changes to a few plugins. Um, and the plugins that are likely to break are ones that uh, write the UI themselves directly, or if they include the table tag in their plugin somewhere, it probably won't work. And we have um, bridging um, code, and there's examples in the doc, there's a, there's a how-to guide in the documentation for how to do that, which Oleg's just showing you at the moment. Um, and the other is, is JavaScript that is tied to the current implementation of the UI. Um, and that needs to be able to handle both approaches. Um, mm -hmm. There's not a lot of JavaScript in Jenkins and most of it isn't quite central plugins. So in general, it's not such an issue. Um, but those are some of the most likely cases to break. Um, I think we've probably tested most of the default plugins. So in Jenkins, there's a default plugin concept or recommended plugin concept when you first start it up and you just get the default plugins. Um, but there's probably some other popular plugins that we've missed and that's where we'd like some help. And so any kind of uh, testing will be much appreciated. Yeah, and feedback in general. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are also some uh, other uh, issues related to user experience and accessibility, which are uh, fairly minor, and uh, somebody is welcome to uh, start working on them. And for example, we, yes, we can see that Roman has already started working on one of them. So feel free to take a look, and yeah, we, if you hit uh, more issues, please uh, report them so that uh, 
uh, we can also process them uh, during the hack fest or later because yeah, it's a larger project for user experience seek and yeah, there is a lot of uh, stories to be handled so and the next big project for us is uh, system read permission so why it's important uh, there is uh, an ongoing adoption of jenkins configuration as code uh, it uh, doesn't mean only jcask plugin and maybe also for example jenkins separator for kubernetes helm charts uh, uh, or just old style configuration management tools and groovy hooks all of that uh, basically allows you to manage uh, jenkins as code and uh, there is interest to also make a better user interface for that. So for example, that uh, admins can browse configurations, uh, or you can browse agent configurations, uh, access diagnostics information without having the opportunity uh, to modify something and unintentionally break something. So this is one of major areas, uh, thanks to team for driving Kajab 224, which is a foundation bit for system read permission circuit system. So, team, would you like to introduce this project as well? Yeah. Sure, now that I've muted myself. Yeah. Uh, yep, so there is a um, blog post which we should ship right after this meeting, um, which is an announcement, um, which basically takes us through what it is. Um, so, if you're interested in that, take a look at the blog post. Um, Basic introduction is, so there's two sides of it. Most of what I've worked on is the system read, but there's also, as part of this, uh, read only the Jenkins as a whole came in. Um, so previously there was some, some older permissions, extended read for jobs and extended read for agents. Um, extended read for jobs was there, but didn't change the UI at all. And it was confusing to users as they, tr they could try and save it and it wouldn't do anything. Um, and extended for, for ages, agents didn't actually do anything. So as part of this, what we've um, started, started from system read, but extended to uh, read only Jenkins as a whole. Um, so it's, it's basically about allowing your users to consume Jenkins from, from at all the levels so they can see if their build goes wrong, the user has all the information available to them. They can see at the system level, they can see so they can see the logs, they, but they can also contribute to your Jenkins as well um, via configuration as code. They can see what plugins are installed. Um, they can see the current configuration um, and they can also see who's allowed to do what. So they need to know, they can know who to contact. They can see who the admin of the instance is, um, all that information that's just not available out of the box. Um, so, doing, so turning this on allows you to basically have a full read experience um, quite similar to a lot of other CI systems as well. Um, that's basically a short introduction. Um, so we have a blog post which will go more detail into it and what's what's currently there and what's supported. And there is a how-to guide as well for how to convert a plugin or a core component to support it. Um, that should be yep, that link coming yep. there. So there's the three different permissions for system, agent, and jobs. There's how to adapt it, and I've tried to put guidance for Jelly and Groovy as it's quite similar, but if you're not used to them, it's slightly different. And it took me a bit of time to figure out Groovy, especially because there's a lot less Groovy ex examples, um, which makes it a bit more complex. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, please follow these guidelines and again uh, any kind of experience and feedback would be nice so the difference is that this feature basically lands in the weekly release i'm not sure whether it beats out or not but it definitely will definitely happen in a few hours so you can uh, you will be just able to take the recent weekly version and start uh, using that uh, for um, uh, tables to diffs you will have to use uh, jenkins build from the pull request but still it's quite straightforward to set it up and get running Cool. Um, last thing on the system read is mm -hmm. there's a epic which has a number of open issues in there. Um, so there's a couple of bugs and the number of enhancement requests. Um, so two things we're looking for is more ideas for what should be covered and what's currently missing and someone to pick, pick these up to, and implement them. Um, a, a lot of them should be quite straightforward to do. Right. So I'm just opening. Oh, we fixed everything here, but we will probably report more. 
and here there are some tasks which you could take for particular uh, components. Okay, thanks team. So other topic, yeah, we will uh, be finishing the uh, UX part soon. So other topic is about uh, uh, themes. So many people use different themes in Jenkins and they can actually improve uh, user experience quite a lot. Um, and we invite contributors to contribute to improving existing teams uh, uh, to make them aligned with uh, the recent changes delivered in uh, Jenkins. Uh, there is also um, high demand, for example, in a dark theme for Jenkins. So everybody is welcome to work on this topic. Personally, I'm planning to spend at least some time uh, on that tomorrow. And on Wednesday, we have a training session for themes. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can take existing ones, create new ones, and also uh, yeah, there is an ongoing project uh, the idea about creating a micro set for themes. Because right now what we have is just a simple plugin document, simple theme plugin documentation, which lists some themes here. But uh, obviously we could do much better like a GitHub IO site with some links to existing themes, with information about uh, which Jenkins versions supported, with some screenshots, etc., so that themes can be easily accessible uh, uh, by users. Okay, so I guess uh, that's all about themes. Uh, we also have an advanced project for pipeline visualization. As Jeremy said, uh, yeah, Blotion uh, was a part of story for pipeline visualization. It's still a part of the story, but uh, there is demand uh, uh, to improve something around that. Um, and uh, if anybody is interested to, uh, to contribute, uh, uh, you're welcome. So uh, there are multiple directions uh, we should uh, could take, uh, including creating a new browsing capability, for example, as a plugin, or maybe doing something else. Unfortunately, we don't have newcomer-friendly tickets there, but uh, if you would like to work on this area and improve, please let us know. Uh, we will try to help as much as we can. Um, so we also have some uh, stories for credentials uh, UI improvement. It's a story submitted by team because credentials management in Jenkins is quite complicated and uh, uh, not always trivial. So if you would like to improve uh, uh, something in this area, please do so. And pretty much for uh, almost uh, every other plugin, if you see something uh, uncomfortable to you, if you submit a pull request, we will do our best to help uh, it get landed. Uh, last but not least, the developer tools. Uh, in order to help uh, Jenkins uh, developers to create better plugins, we need uh, tools. So for example, we have a plugin with, uh, for UI samples, which includes uh, examples of common themes. So, well, uh, this plugin doesn't uh, even have readme, so definitely there is a lot of opportunities for improvement. And if you want to create a new samples, for example, today uh, Uli Hafner will be doing a presentation about uh, uh, how to improve uh, user interface of plugins with uh, various JavaScript libraries. So if you would like to uh, create some examples based on this uh, presentation, you can just uh, put uh, them here. Um, then, yeah. uh, other examples uh, would be welcome. Also, there is an idea about improving uh, IntelliJ IDEA plugin for Stepler. So Stepler is a uh, well, uh, framework we use in Jenkins for uh, REST API mapping and for object mapping, for request handling, and a lot of development uh, happens using Stepler plugin. For example, uh, J well, uh, this plugin also includes Jelly framework and the Groovy framework support, so uh, which uh, we use uh, for many Jenkins UIs. And if you want to create uh, new archetypes for JavaScript-based plugins, so basically boilerplate templates, everyone can copy and create uh, their own plugins based on that, you're welcome to do that. So this is just a list of stories we have uh, on the table. Again, this list is not complete. So if you want to work on something else, uh, please do so. And yeah, mm, this is just a guideline and a set of project ideas. Okay, any comments before we move on to documentation? Okay, so yeah. 
then I think we could uh, spend some time on the documentation. So Mark, uh, would you like to speak about that? Sure, I'm Mark Waite. I'm the Jenkins documentation officer, uh, trying to coordinate and share with people how they can help us improve the Jenkins documentation. Uh, next slide, uh, Oleg. Mm. So um, we've got several different aspects of improving the documentation. One is that the user and administrator documentation has many areas that you can improve just by reviewing and renewing it to be sure that it reflects the current behaviors and the current look and feel of Jenkins. You could also, if you're a JavaScript coder or interested in looking at how documentation lays out, you can improve the navigation, uh, help us have tables of contents that are better suited to users who need to find what they're looking for. Likewise, if you're a JavaScript interested, you could consider improving the look and feel. Also, maybe you're a mobile user and you want to look to see how could we help this documentation be more readily used for people on mobile. All available. Next slide. Sure. Okay. Now, in addition, we've got an awful lot of very useful content that over the course of the many years of Jenkins development has collected in the Jenkins Wiki. What we're doing now is we've got a project as part of this Hackfest and ongoing afterwards that wants to convert content from the Jenkins Wiki into Jenkins.io. That conversion process lets us use the knowledge that's been captured in those Wiki pages, refine and improve it, and place it into the official destination on Jenkins.io. The Wiki exporter tool that's hyperlinked here will give you assistance in making that conversion from wiki format into ascii doc here it is what you do is into the top field you paste in the url of a wiki page press the con change the convert output format to ascii doc and then press the convert button and it does the conversion for you and gives you the rudimentary ascii doc ready to go so that wiki exporter will help you as you make that help us make this transition. In addition, if you wonder, oh, which page should I work on? Well, we've placed into GitHub issues the top 50 most accessed wiki pages as issues. So you can choose one of these wiki migration issues and start working on that page, knowing that it is in the top 50 pages accessed from the wiki in the last roughly 90 days. So GitHub issues, easy to navigate, easy for you to find. When you find one that you say, I'd like to work on this, you just open that issue and place a comment in it which says, I'm working on this. That's enough. We just rely on each other to read the comments to, to not pick up something someone else is working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that the wiki, the wiki migration project is is a good help. Let's go on to the next slide. You, that was great, Oleg. In addition, we've got user experience improvements that we're looking for in places like initial installation um, or in the experience as you work through a tutorial. Both of those are places where you could help users by assuring that the installation works the way it's described and you can run Jenkins on lots of different places in lots of different ways. We also have tutorials linked here, included both the guided tour and a number of language specific tutorials that we want to be sure still are working correctly and well behaved. Each one of them takes you through a series of steps. We have things from how you use, might use it with Maven, how you might create a multi-branch project how you could do parallel testing, all sorts of different ways to work with either Python or Node or, or you choose it. We've got lots of interesting tutorials that could use validation and safety checks that they're still working well. Yeah, I would also like to add that, uh, yeah, Jenkins is an automation server. So such use cases are really important because uh, if you develop something with Jenkins, most likely you want to automate something. 
So real world experience uh, for different tools uh, is essential uh, for users. It could help uh, a lot and it could save them a lot of time. So if you're willing to write uh, new tutorials for tools you use, it's uh, uh, welcome. And also um, we have uh, solution pages, which basically also describe the various use cases from the user side. For example, if you work with GitHub or if you develop in Java or if you develop in C++, you can find something here. And here you can see uh, two obvious issues. One is that uh, we could have uh, much more solution pages. So they would definitely benefit from uh, something specific. And if you have a technology you use, uh, please just uh, submit a pull request. If you want uh, to talk about practices like continuous integration, DevOps, continuous deployment, whatever, you can also write specific uh, pages for that. And for existing pages, yeah, they also would benefit from uh, some improvement. So for example, if you go to Java, you can see that uh, yeah, layouts could be improved. Uh, also, the content is uh, probably a bit obsolete. Uh, so, if you want to improve pages, it would be much appreciated because this is something Jenkins users uh, uh, would like to see when uh, they uh, look for uh, their use cases. And so. it's it's impressive the number of times we receive requests to the Jenkins I/O site asking for a C tutorial. If you're a C or a C++ programmer. Don't be shy at offering a tutorial that how you might use Jenkins to do C and C++ based development. It's, it's a very common need. Lots of people would love to have it. Yeah, and right now we have a very extensive tutorial here. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely something we could improve. Uh, yeah, these pages were created for Jenkins 2.0 and we could do a lot more here. So, if you look uh, for more issues uh, related uh, to the documentation, we actually, uh, we actually have a number of queries. Mm, so for example, uh, what uh, Mark presented on Jenkins.io, and later we also have queries about plugin documentation. So should we speak about plugins then? Yes, or, yes. Uh, I think that was next on the list. Right, so plug as part of the effort, special thanks to Gavin Mogan, the plugin site has been revamped and is significantly better. That change has brought us the ability to do plugins and host their documentation in GitHub as code instead of hosting it on the wiki page. So what you're seeing right now that Oleg is showing is plugin documentation extracted straight from GitHub and placed into the plugin site. It makes life much easier for plugin maintainers when they can maintain their documentation at the same time that they're maintaining their code. They maintain it in a simple markup file here and it gets automatically published. Now, uh, sorry. Oh. I just wanted to, to say that we need your help with migrating these pages, but I'm pretty sure that is exactly what Mark was going to say. That's right. The migration progress process is in progress, right? There are over 1,500 plugins uh, in Jenkins and with uh, available and that many plugins, there are a lot that need their documentation migrated. Here is the list that you can see of plugins and their various migration states. So as you scroll further down, we eventually reach a point, oh, here are some plugins, the nice white rows that have not been migrated yet. They're to do. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to work on one, you just click that plugin and you can see what, how, to, how to approach that from this exporter page. And it will offer a prototype converted wiki page to you, ready to go, and you can use this to submit a pull request. Yeah, we also have the table guidelines, how to uh, process that um, referenced from the Hackfest site. Because yeah, this uh, this uh, is just a skeleton. Uh, usually, documentation pages require some copy editing, mm -hmm. and when we migrate documentation, we encourage uh, contributors to actually improve the documentation uh, as they go. Because there may be obsolete terminology, there might be just uh, obsolete screenshots. We still see screenshots uh, which use Hudson interface from 2007 or so. So all of that could be improved, and well, when you the, the migration, we will appreciate such uh, contributions. Right. And then on a, on a, as a personal mm -hmm. note, the process of converting documentation from wiki 
to GitHub for a plugin I maintain made all the difference in the quality of that documentation. So it's good that when we do this transformation, we apply brain power to it. Now tomorrow, mm -hmm. Oleg's going to take us through a live demonstration of how to convert a plugin documentation. And yes, it will be the Chuck Norris plugin. We look forward to Chuck Norris being converted from Wiki to GitHub based documentation. Yeah, uh, that's my plan. And we also have a session by Mark, uh, which talks about uh, Jenkins IO documentation. So again, if you go to uh, the list of the events, so we have a session today with Uli, then we have a session today with Alisa, and then a number of sessions tomorrow, including two documentation sessions and the system recognition demo by team. So and, uh, please feel free to join any of these sessions if you're interested in documentation and we will do a deep dive there. And Oleg, I think that was it for my topics. Yeah, that's a yeah. reminder that the, the sites are there, the links are there. We'd love to have your help. Okay, yeah, that's right. So any questions before we move on? Okay, uh, then uh, really a short uh, introduction to the third track, spread the word. Uh, so uh, having content, having documentation is not enough. Uh, you also need to make this documentation, this information visible. And uh, it's always good to share the stories and to celebrate achievements in the project. Uh, and we really rely on Jenkins users and contributors. Uh, we invite you to, show, uh, to share these stories. Uh, uh, several weeks ago, we have launched uh, Jenkins's The Way program. So this program basically invites you uh, to share your user story or case study. And we start publishing uh, um, uh, case studies from uh, different users here. So for example, there is a story by T-Mobile, etc. You can uh, uh, go inside and read uh, the details. And uh, if you have an interesting story to share about Jenkins, uh, please do so. You can just submit um, a story on this website uh, and we will appreciate that. So later today, Alisa will be talking about Jenkins's The Way program in details, but yeah, uh, uh, you can find uh, all the details here in the announcement blog post. And you can also write uh, stories, for example, for Jenkins blog. Uh, you can go to Jenkins website and here you can find our blog. We have a lot of announcements here, but if uh, you submit a case study or submit any worse story about Jenkins, uh, we will be happy to review that and help uh, to get published. Same, you can do it on external resources. For example, if you use medium.com, you can do that during the Hackfest. And uh, you can also just post about your experience and new features uh, which happened during this Hackfest or which has been recently released. And if you want to record a video and publish it, uh, please also do so. It's also helpful to Jenkins users. So this is basically the track. Anything uh, which helps uh, to promote Jenkins, uh, to make it more visible and to help users to find proper solutions to their automation cases. Uh, please uh, feel free to publish that and also report that because many of these stories do not require GitHub. And this is where these guidelines from your UX Hackfest come in place because uh, yeah, this is the way how you can report them. So we can process them, discover them, and uh, repost them uh, when possible. Mm -hmm. I, I continue to be impressed at the number of people and the number of ways that Jenkins is used that I think are fascinating. I talked just last mm -hmm. week with somebody who's doing audio engineering. With, with Jenkins. Uh, I happen to have a family member who works on robotics with Jenkins. And we would love to hear your story about how you're using Jenkins. Don't forget that the way you're creating software is interesting, novel, and probably distinct from the way others are doing it, Jenkins supporting it. Thanks very much for being willing. Thank you. And actually it was uh, last slide. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, we can discuss them now. We have something like 27 minutes uh, reserved for this uh, session. And yeah, we have one hour till uh, Uli begins his presentation about uh, improving uh, user experience for Jenkins plugins. So 
any questions, any comments? Or does anyone want uh, to talk about other stories? There is a question. So there is a question regarding C sharp development. So uh, from Philip, uh, what I'm uh, going to do there? Uh, just uh, uh, grant Philip permission to speak. So Philip, uh, now you should be able to ask uh, your question. Or maybe in the chat. Um, hello, can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I was doing uh, almost a year ago, I was doing uh, .NET development using uh, .NET Core. It was part of a master's uh, degree uh, thesis. Uh, and uh, for that moment, I uh, was considering to use uh, either uh, GitLab CI or Jenkins. Uh, I inclined more to Jenkins, so all of the automation was done uh, with Jenkins. But I found uh, a couple of uh, issues regarding some Docker plugins that were not working properly, and uh, it was actually quite hard to uh, dive deeper in the testing uh, use cases because we had uh, some issues with the uh, unit testing frameworks. Uh, we were uh, assessing whether should we use NSS or XUnit uh, or any unit to test our uh, uh, applications, but we uh, uh, encountered MS test plugin. Uh, the MS mm -hmm. test plugin actually worked with um, some other plugins like NextUnit and then Unit, but it was only optimized for MS test. So, uh, in terms of performance, we uh, uh, we, we concluded that MS test was the slowest uh, one of the three frameworks that we tested, but when we tested it on Jenkins, it was actually the fastest. Uh, the question is, I haven't been developing this particular project anymore, but I wanted to know if uh, making a next unit plugin or a new unit plugin or making some uh, actual, uh, making more uh, plugins uh, to be available for the community to use uh, to develop with .NET is actually something that you consider, or if uh, you don't incline that much towards .NET uh, development. Yeah. So to answer this question, uh, if somebody wants to create a plugin for .NET, it will be more than welcome. We have uh, quite a number of plugins, as you may see, we still have uh, some uh, problems with tagging and uh, discovery, because for example, MS test plugin doesn't appear there, though it should. Uh, and we welcome contributions. Though for .NET, we have historically one issue. Uh, if you want to write a plugin for .NET, you should uh, know .NET and you should know Java because Jenkins plugins are basically uh, created around uh, Java, uh, JVM ecosystem and JVM languages. Yeah, you can run a, write a plugin in Kotlin, but generally you need something uh, specific to Java. So historically Jenkins has a much stronger support for JVM stack than uh, for .NET, but personally I've been using Jenkins for .NET uh, for quite a while. And uh, if you see a specific plugin which is missing, uh, yeah, I think it would be great to at least report issues for that. Uh, for example, uh, you if you're interested to contribute, you could start from creating solution page specifically for .NET, because yeah, again, we are missing that. So you could uh, accumulate uh, the existing plugins and uh, report gaps which are missing, and uh, probably we could uh, facilitate some contributions to this area. Because mm, yeah, .NET is a quite popular use case, and yeah, .NET is more or less open source these days. Uh, so yeah, contributions are welcome. Okay, thank you, thank you. It, in some sense, it's not even just open source, it's also multi-platform, right? I mean, there are .NET frameworks from Miguel Acasa and others that, are, that give me more than just one platform. Yes, yes, .NET is cross-platform, it 
runs on Linux and uh, Windows. It works perfectly on either one of them. That's why uh, we chose to actually develop uh, some of the application in that language. Yeah. So if you want uh, to contribute to .NET part, actually we have some .NET and Jenkins. We have Windows services and all the Windows services are managed by Windows Service Wrapper. So Windows Service Wrapper is a component which is written solely in C Sharp. Uh, actually it includes uh, distributions for .NET and also .NET Core uh, with native executables. So we should not require .NET framework on the instance. And right now we have uh, a number of projects there which actually relate to user experience. For example, verification of the configurations and supporting YAML configurations because right now it's only XML. So if you're interested to contribute uh, to this area, uh, you're also welcome to do that. So yeah, documenting uh, use cases for .NET C Sharp, uh, discovering issue, uh, cases which are missing, and yeah, just contributing some code is also welcome. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, any other comments or questions? I don't see any. So I maybe I'll stop screen sharing for a while. So any additional comments uh, from the panelists? So Oleg, are there are there ways that contributors so for instance, just this week we've got new arrivals on the user experience in the weekly build. Are there any things we need to forewarn people who are interested in testing? Hey, try this in the new weekly build. Should they just be looking at the change log? Uh, what's what are there any specific guidance we should offer them on particularly Jenkins 2.238? Okay, so uh, let me share my screen again. Uh, so if you want to discover new features, uh, the easiest way is to go to the change log. Yeah, change log uh, doesn't include the release which is happening right now. Uh, but yeah, here, if you scroll down, you can uh, see some uh, enhancements there. So red ones are bugs, uh, blue ones are enhancements and improvements. Improvements, for example, restyle uh, the help button, a number of permissions, uh, a number of improvements for system read, etc. So you can find uh, such uh, errors uh, in the change log. This is one of the ways so, to discover issues. Another way is to actually go to the Jenkins roadmap. So it's uh, a work in progress roadmap where we publish uh, uh, key and going stories. And for example, there are stories which are likely interested in, uh, to hackers participants, for example, pipeline is YAML. There is working prototype and incubated project for that. Uh, there is also uh, projects for Git performance, uh, Git uh, hub uh, up authentication, for look and feel improvements, a lot of pro projects for administration, and also uh, some uh, other projects like Jenkins Kubernetes Separator, Jenkins File Runner, uh, various Docker images. So if you want uh, to try something, you can uh, take a look at this column. I guess all of these projects would benefit from some user experience testing and feedback, and all of these projects are available uh, for try and count uh, at least in some sense. For recent releases, you can also refer to the Jenkins uh, blog. Uh, major stories, we encourage contributors to publish uh, their stories. So for example, here, Windows Docker images, general availability. So we have just released it. If you want to try it out, uh, if you are uh, using Windows in Kubernetes or in Docker, it's definitely something you could try out. Renaming images, also GitHub app authentication support, which has been released uh, recently. So team was uh, working on that, and now we have a, a GSOC student working on follow-up projects, like for example, integration with GitHub Checks API, uh, then for example, uh, uh, credentials for Asia, etc. So if you just go through this list, you can uh, discover a lot of recent stories. And uh, if you see missing uh, features, you can uh, actually write uh, about them. Because in Jenkins, we have around 40 to 50 releases every day in terms of Jenkins core, plugins, and other components. Um, and most likely in these releases, you can find something interesting to you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, does it answer your question, Mark? It did, thank you, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments or suggestions? Okay, so we have 45 minutes before the next session. I would like to thank everyone who participated in this call and who is watching the recording. Uh, have a great week and uh, we are looking forward to work with you in the Jenkins project. If you are a newcomer contributor or if you're an experienced contributor, we hope that uh, this event will be a great experience for you. Uh, if you have any questions after the event, again, please ask uh, in the Gitter chat and uh, we will be able to continue the discussions there. So, thanks everyone. And I guess I will stop uh, the video recording. Okay, if I find the button finally.